This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility, and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 9138422. So for PCOS plus IVF, what do you change in the protocol and is it worth delaying treatment to optimize first? Well, women with PCOS, some of them are overweight. That's part of the syndrome. So losing weight is beneficial if that's possible before you start an IVF cycle if you've got PCOS. But in general terms, no different from anybody else. The With PCOS, it's a very positive <laughs> situation to be in when you're going into an IVF cycle because it's highly likely you're going to get more than the average number of eggs and if you get more than the average number of eggs, then you're going to get more than the average number of embryos, and therefore you're going to have a higher chance of success. So PCOS women do well with IVF. The important part of PCOS, though, is in that stimulation that produces more eggs, we can go over the top very easily. So it's very important that you have a specialist who understands PCOS and to determine what is the best dose for you in terms of this, the FSH stimulation. That uh, will tend to be lower than in the average patient who doesn't have PCOS. And then as the cycle develops, as you get stimulated, people will be watching closely or should be watching closely for over overstimulation. Although these days with the way in which we trigger with something called antagonist, in those, in those patients who are looking like being OHSS prone, we use a, this different trigger to the standard HCG and we avoid OHSS anyway. So we're not, we're not particularly fussed anymore by uh, taking a woman into, an OH, into a cycle with polycystic ovaries as we were at, uh, in the past. We also know that the antagonist regime, uh, which is was, uh, the, the 90% of cycles in Australia now are, uh, using an antagonist to stop the ovulation occurring too early, in those cycles we get a lower rate of OHSS in PCOS women compared with in the past when we used an agonist, what's called an agonist protocol. We rarely would ever use an agonist protocol in a PCOS woman. So there, there are things that need to be done, and it does depend on your clinician, but the clinician should be someone who understands PCOS and it's not you're not just an average patient. In terms of cumulative pregnancy rates, women with PCOS have a higher chance of a, of a pregnancy because of the multiple embryos that they are most likely to produce. The, the regimes, uh, as I say, are well worked out and embryo transfers in a frozen cycle subsequently may be a little more tricky because women with PCOS tend to have cycles where they don't ovulate. So timing it is can be a, li a little bit tricky and may require giving stimulation of the of the cycle either with tablets clomiphene or letrozole or using a small dose of fsh to make sure that ovulation occurs in that cycle so we're not we can put an embryo back so that that's the other area where pcos women can be a little bit different but if i see a woman with pcos who needs ivf and i'd have to say that Probably half women with PCOS who come to see me for infertility will not ever need IVF because inducing ovulation on a regular basis is, is going to get you a pregnancy without having to go through IVF. Don't get rushed into going to IVF just because you've got polycystic ovaries. It's the best non-IVF group of patients to help get pregnant. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.